Oh, great. You're just in time. Everybody, let me introduce you to Brenda Sullivan and Rich Silcox. We're here at NASA Langley in a building where they do acoustical research. Let's go here first to Rich. You are a senior research engineer, right? Correct. All right. And Brenda, hmm, I'm going to get this name wrong. Brenda, you are a psychoacoustician. Now, can you correct my wording and then tell me a little bit about what that is? Well, I'm a psychoacoustician. Psychoacoustician is somebody who designs, conducts, and analyzes tests to study the psychological effects of noise on people. Oh, psychological effects. Now that's, that's kind of interesting. And Rich, how about you? Can you describe for us just what exactly is a senior research engineer? Well, Shelley, there's a lot of noise research that goes on here relating to aircraft noise. And I work with researchers both here and at NASA Glenn in Ohio and NASA Ames in California to come up with ways to reduce the noise that aircraft make. The word acoustics means the scientific study of sound and how the qualities of space affect sound to transmit well or poorly. Why don't we begin with the research that Brenda's doing. Brenda, why don't you introduce Shelley to your fellow sound researcher? Certainly. Shelley, meet Fred the Head. This is Fred. This is Fred. Fred and his friend Norm here are essentially my research. Testing for noise starts with deciding what aspect of noise to study. For instance, the sound in a community near an airport, or the noises inside an actual airplane. See, that's where Norm comes in. I take him up in the air, inside the airplane, so he can record the noises as in there in flight. See, he's got a microphone in each ear. They're kind of hard to see on Norm. They're easier to see on Fred. Let me show you. Okay. Yowch! It's all right. He's used to that sort of treatment. Oh. See, he's got, I've got a mic in there. It's hard to see. Let me take oh. his skull off. Wow. See, he has a microphone in each ear. Anyway, these little microphones record the sound that's heard by each ear, just as you would hear it yourself. I take these binaural recordings I make with Norm and bring them back to the lab. I can edit them on the computer and play them back to the people who come in to act as subjects in my tests. For instance, I can take some of the tones made by the propellers of a plane and reduce them. And people can tell me if they prefer the reduced versions and how much they prefer them so that we can predict their reactions to future noises. Oh, how interesting. Shelley, if you'd like, I can arrange to show you NASA's 757 research aircraft and I can show you the physics involved in producing the sound and how one goes about controlling the sound. Oh man, that would be so cool. I know I'd be interested. I'm sure the viewers would be interested in seeing a real live NASA jumbo jet research plane. <laughs> Shelley, this is the NASA 757 in which we conduct various types of research. NASA has a 10-year goal to reduce noise impact from aircraft so the communities hear one half the noise that they heard in 1997. The amount of noise reduction is similar to the difference between heavy traffic noise and light traffic noise. The noise impact reduction effort is led by NASA Langley Research Center and is conducted in close partnership with NASA Glenn Research Center in Ohio and NASA Ames Research Center in California along with help from academia, industry, and the FAA. Wow, this aircraft is huge. Where do you even begin to start to find the many sources of noise that must come from this aircraft? In some modern aircraft like this 757, a lot of noise is generated from the air turbulence created by the wing flaps, slats, and landing gear slicing through the air. To control this type of noise, we use computers to create detailed models of the airflow over these surfaces and look for ways to smooth out the flow and reduce the turbulence. Shelley, of course, most of the noise is produced by the jet engine. Modern jet engines have these large fans that move large volumes of air through the engines. However, the fan itself produces what we call fan tones. This type of noise is reduced by treating the inlet and exhaust duct with special acoustic liners, sort of like towels for office ceilings. And Shelley, the biggest noise problem we have is that of jet exhaust noise. And working with us in jet exhaust noise is Martha Brown. Hi, Martha. Hi, Rich. Yeah, well, hi, Martha. Hi, Shelley. Martha, Shelley has a particular problem in noise abatement. I was wondering if you could explain to Martha what it is. Yeah, thanks, Rich. My problem is that I'm trying to get some pointers on how to reduce noise for my friend Van and his band, The Noodles. Mm. They rehearse in a garage, and it seems that their rehearsals are disturbing the neighbor as he's trying to take a nap. So we're trying to figure out how can we reduce the noise or the sound coming out of the garage. Do you think you can help? I'll be glad to help. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself and what I do at NASA Langley. Okay. I work as an engineer in the Jet Noise Laboratory. I study ways to change the air coming out of a jet with the hope of reducing noise created by this air. 
High-speed air is needed to move an airplane forward. I work with a team of engineers to invent ways to change the speed of the air exiting the jet by jet mixing. So just how do you increase jet mixing? Well, Shelly, we use non-round shapes like this rectangle nozzle, mm -hmm. this elliptical nozzle, and also this corrugated nozzle. Oh, now this reminds me of a flower with petals. I see what you mean, but in fact, they're called lobes. Lobes. Yes. And also we may change the round nozzle and how it looks by adding tabs at the ends that you see here. Oh, now these tabs look like shark teeth. So what other ways do you have to reduce noise? Well, Shelly, we use materials to line the inside of the nozzle. You see, this is called a liner. And what it's used to do is to absorb the sound before it exits the nozzle. Hmm, like a muffler? Yes. OK, let's go back to Van now. Mm -hmm. What one point might you make back to Van that could help him with his problem? Hmm, I recommend that he buy ceiling tiles to line the ceiling of his garage. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. And Shelly, he can install carpet on the floor and draperies on the windows to help reduce the sound. Oh, Rich and Martha, that's great sound advice. And I will share that back with Van. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, and to the rest of you, gang, I'm going to send you to find Van and see what he's up to. Meanwhile, I'm going to head back to the NASA Connect studio and get ready for our special guest. And if you haven't thought of some questions, think about some, because in a moment, you'll be able to call in with your questions. I'll see you back at the studio.